Hello YouTube, it's NaysayRx here, back with another review video. Today we are taking a look at Synced. As you all know, Synced is a match-based roguelike hero shooter developed by Next Studios. The game is currently in open beta on Steam since December 9th. During this time, I have managed to put in 53 hours of playtime. In this video, I will be covering what I enjoyed most about the time spent playing Sync, and also a few cons I have come across the way. If you have played Synced already, please leave a comment down below about what you think about the beta so far, or if you have not, please let me know what you, if you think you're going to try it out. The beta goes till January 15th, so there's still plenty of time to test it out. Also, if you enjoy the game reviews or videos of newest games that have come out, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. Thank you guys. We hit YouTube partner recently and it was because of you. I truly appreciate it. Now let's get into it. First and foremost, I would like to say, wow, I never intended to get hooked into this game like I did. Prior tests of this game did not go nearly as well as this open beta has for me. And I was very frustrated. Prior tests, I encountered invisible nanos and other types of enemies that just wouldn't load into the game. These enemies would take me out even without seeing them. So I set the game aside and waited for the next test in hopes that it would all be fixed. Seems with the beta, they have corrected the issues and all the characters loaded in fine. I can see everybody. Now the first few days of the beta were amazing. I found myself addicted to fighting through the dead sector levels and the dead sector runs to see what awesome boss was at the end of it. Of course these runs require you to find mods that help you increase your power level so that you can hit the minimum requirement in order to do the next dead sector run. One downfall of this I would like to point out is that these minimum required power levels for each dead sector wasn't hard locked. Meaning if I was carried through dead sector one and say my power level was 1200, but the minimum requirement for dead sector two is 2000, you could still queue up and be carried by other two players on your team that you were matched up with. This is a good and a bad thing at the same time. On the good side of the spectrum, it allowed players to progress to the next mission quicker so they didn't have to keep running the same boss over and over again and the game becomes stale off rip. Or they have their buddies catch them up but the opposite side of this is if you were the correct power level as somebody who actually hit the requirements and were in your general correct dead sector, you would see extremely unqualified players joining into your game to be carried through the boss. Personally, I didn't like this. Not that I couldn't do it, but it made the missions way more tough and harder than they were supposed to be for somebody that is at the correct level to complete because someone was extremely under leveled. Sure, it was great for them, but like I said, it wasn't the best when you were the one carrying them through a mission like you're Dwayne The Rock Johnson and they're just like, Danny DeVito or something. Now, as of right now, the game allows you to unlock currencies in the game that can be used to augment your mods, adding special stats to your already awesome mods that you find throughout the Dead Sector runs that can just make them that much more powerful. I think this is awesome because as you find mods you want to use, you can simply augment them, which allows them to gain or bonus stats adding to your character's mods per slot. You can also pick up jobs from NPCs. These jobs allow you to complete them. Not only do they give you new mods and equipment currencies, it also helps you progress in the battle pass. Currently I'm level 36 in the battle pass and have played 50 hours. When the game actually launches, I hope they make it slightly easier to gain battle pass levels, but with it being free and in beta and unlockable through playing, I can't complain too much. Another very cool feature this game has is elite runs and ranked elite runs. Similar to dead sector runs, these runs require you to beat one through five dead sectors and tier one and tier two regular elite runs before moving on to ranked. In both ranked and non elite runs, you spawn in and complete five waves of enemies progressing you to one through five new sections at the end of each section you are allowed to pick mods weapons health or whatever you would like to help you beat that wave you successfully complete all five waves and sections they tally up your score and give you some sick loot and mods and they give you the score and tell you how well you did the score ranges from bronze to grandmaster your highest score ends up being your rank this is addicting to me i find myself trying to run pve runs to try and beat my best score and acquiring top tier mods for my character this system is amazing it gives you something to play for maybe the pvp side of things isn't really your cup of tea yes there's other content 
for just PvE grinders. There are even leaderboards. This is brilliant. And after 50 hours, I'm still grinding to try and reach higher power levels and ranks. There's also dailies that allow you to do random generated mission, giving you rewards, which updates every day. The jobs I mentioned earlier, you can also have refreshed daily too. This helps with progression per day and keeps you playing. On top of the game, having login rewards where you can get skins and characters even. That's a great job right there. So this game has PvP leaderboards and PvE leaderboards, which you don't see in many looter shooters having both of those. This game is often a great direction and I thought this was awesome feature for a beta game to have already. Now I know there are a ton of you wondering, what about PvP? Well, let me just say the PVP is a blast also. Everyone that stops by my stream asks me, hey, what would you say this PVP is like? My best description is early on cycle. I'm talking before full release back in the early testing when you had to capture as many resources as you could and extract with the most points compared to the other teams on the map by doing objectives and killing enemies. The game also gives me Shadowline vibes with going to different areas and defeating enemies, but also see hints of million other games like Division or even some Battle Royale aspects of finding loot on the ground. But this game does have starting loadouts and weapon progression and attachments also. And it has weapon upgrade stations to upgrade them as you're playing a match in both PvP and PvE. If you don't want to use ground loot, just upgrade your weapons. But each match is 12 players, 4 teams, and 3 players on each. Everyone gets 3 lives. As you kill enemies, you gather resources and the timers count down for events and things happening on the map. You want to grab and do as many objectives as you can before the first extraction gets there. When it does get there, you want to try to extract with the most points. But it's not just one extract, there's two times to do this. If you extract the first time, you gain a ton of points, but it throws you back into the game. You then have a final extract. If you extract the second time, you get more points, plus the game ends. So you want to keep your eye out to secure most points and win with an extract. As far as weapons go, almost all weapons are viable from ground loot to your loadouts. But with my time in PvP, I can say, wow, does sniping feel good. There's headshot damage and snipers are very accurate. Unlike the ARs and other weapons that kind of feel lackluster compared to the snipers, the snipers absolutely rip. I found myself hitting clips multiple times a stream and just having a blast. So to answer your question, PvP is also fun. Although the gunplay at times can feel floaty, the satisfying sniper shots kept me coming back for more. I know this isn't the most in-depth description of the PvP. That's because I could literally make a whole video describing it on its own which I might end up doing, but the video is about general thoughts on the whole game. Although this game has characteristics of many games, I think there is one key aspect that I found out that brings different type of playstyle, uniqueness, and excitement to the game. That is your nano that you sync with. When you kill a prime enemy marked with a purple icon above its head, you can then go and sync it by holding down a keystroke. Syncing allows you to wear this companion on your arm looking like Jax from Mortal Kombat. You can then throw the companion out by pressing Q to a desired location to fight alongside you and your group. Each different type of companion has its own perk and skills that complement your team and can be, be melee or ranged. This brought a huge fun factor to the game for me. Doing different mod builds and complementing them with different type of nanos and then also being able to pick from different types of characters that have their own abilities. Playing the different characters who have different abilities also complemented the companion. This helps with the game feeling fresh. Some nanos are good for PvP, some nanos are good for PvE and they absolutely decimate. This allowed for so many mix up some variations i find myself still switching characters nanos and mods and trying all kinds of things out one downfall that i didn't notice was the amount of servers that were available for matchmaking i honestly believe the u.s server is only located in west coast although it wasn't confirmed that's my guess this caused my ping to be 120 ping while playing this whole time Along with the occasional lag spikes when fighting a boss and teleporting. Knowing that this is a beta game, I kind of gave the lag in them only having three servers some ease. They have one in US West, one in EU, and one in Asia from what I've heard. 
Now, some friends in EU said their ping was 30, so I know it's a case-to-case -case basis on some people don't have issues in regards to ping based on wherever their location is. I hope at launch this game has many more available servers based on location to iron out the laggy problems I encountered in the 50 hours of playing. I will say the devs have already released two patches in eight days of the game being launched. They have already tackled boss bugs of them teleporting into walls, reload bugs, and simpler bugs like spawning into the wrong area areas during runs. A lot of these things were addressed quickly and early on. If the devs keep tackling issues this quick for the life of the game, I see this game thriving for a long time. They also made it easier to reach max level 50 by increasing XP gained recently. This makes it easier for the casuals to progress during the testing period. I think it's a good call. Performance wise, I ran everything on epic quality with like 100 to 120 FPS maxed out and I currently have a 2080 Super in my gaming PC. The game actually seems pretty optimized as far as FPS goes. Like stated before, I think the downfall is the lack of servers and ping, but the game looks gorgeous gorgeous and vibrant colors that really show off well on your monitor when using abilities or just running around collecting Nerva or currencies. This game does a great job with environments and enemies and keeping things fresh. With that being said, if you have a mid to lower end PC, I don't see you having problems playing synced compared to many other betas that I've tried out. Aside from the occasional reload bug or lag, this game is brilliant. And with that being said, I've been trying to get everyone to at least try it. I mean, it's free. If I were to give this game a rating, I would rate this game an 8 out of 10 scythes. The only reason it's missing a few points is due to lag and bugs they're ironing out. Other than that, the party system works well, partying up with your friends in game works great, um, and even the matchmaking with quick matching with randoms was pretty good. The matchmaking finds games in a few minutes, and you don't need any friends to progress in this game if you're a lone wolf like me. I climbed a 6.4k power level, simply queuing with randoms, and currently ranked Platinum 3 in Elite Ranked Runs. With that being said, yes I believe if you haven't checked this game out, you need to. If you're a grinder like me, you'll have plenty to do, and if you're a casual, this game is easy to pick up on. Again, I know this video didn't cover all the aspects of the games, like mods and nanos and all the different currencies and, and builds and all of that but if i did that this video would be like an hour long this is more so should i play it an opinion and somebody that actually put time into the game this is just what i thought with my hours spent grinding this game for the past eight days we'll be following up this review with more in-depth guides for synced and really get into more technical things please make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave your thoughts below in the comments i currently stream daily on twitch at twitch.tv slash naysayerx if you want to check out some more gameplay stop by and let me know you came from this video as for now Sci squad thank you and i'll see you in the next one peace